All right, so uh, I'm just going to do a quick little video uh, lesson about uh, writing your argument essay. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a mini checklist for you to do as you are writing your piece. For starters, your introduction should contain three things. The first will be your lead. Make sure you lose one, use one of our strategies like uh, questioning, statistics, or maybe a quote. You should also have, include in your first paragraph your main reasons to support your argument. And finally, you're going to end your first paragraph with a thesis. So uh, look over that. We're going to take a look, look what this looks like in your in my sample writing. All right, so I color coded this to show you how I'm going to examine or analyze the first document. You'll see the lead's going to be in red, the reasons are going to be in blue, and the thesis is going to be in green. So we'll look here. You can see my lead strategy as I first did here, I did a, a little bit of an anecdote or a story lead to kind of paint the picture about what you, how you would, how I was seeing zoos through my own eyes. So you can kind of, let's say I began with a little bit of a story, right? That was my idea for a lead right here. Then I included my reasons in blue and I ended with a thesis. My thesis is even though zoos are fun and entertaining, they should not exist. So when you're writing your introduction, make sure you have all of those things too. All right, so the middle paragraphs of your essay should be all about your reasons, uh, explaining yourself of why you feel, proving your thesis, right? That's what you should do in the middle paragraphs. And don't forget, what you're going to need to do is include a lot of evidence to support. In your middle paragraphs, every paragraph should have different types of evidence in it. Now, there's different examples of evidence. Now, just three examples I'm going to focus on right now are personal stories as an evidence, expert quotes as a type of evidence, and statistics are a type of evidence, and statistics are numbers. I'm going to show you how I used all three of those in my uh, paragraphs as well. I'm going to color code them again. And I'll make uh, personal stories a little brown, and I'll do the expert quotes in this weird blue, and statistics and numbers. Let's look at the article. Take a second to pause the video and reread this second paragraph here that begins with walking through a zoo. So pause the video, read it. See if you can identify what type of evidence I used here. If you figured out that I used a personal story, nice job. I did, and this, this is a true story. I, I, do, I will tell you, this. I remember this happened to me. It was probably about five years ago. Um, anyway, uh, you'll, I also took the colors away from the top part so you wouldn't get confused. So this is a personal story that uh, I included to prove my point about why animals are not happy. Let's do the same thing in the second paragraph. So looking through this next paragraph here, I can see that I'm talking about the Turtleback Zoo. Um, and I'm, talk I'm mentioning the fact that uh, that zoos do not save endangered animals. But I realize I didn't make this a very strong case right now. This this paragraph isn't my strongest one because I don't have a specific type of evidence. You know, I'm mentioning a little bit of my own experience from the Turtleback Zoo, but the way I would make this str stronger, and I'm going to like put this note in right here to remind myself, include an expert quote. That's going to be something I'm going to remind myself to do uh, when I'm revising this so that I can include to make that paragraph stronger right there. All right, let's move down to the this paragraph right here. Uh, and you can see right now that what I've done here was I did a little bit of a quote, but I've also used some numbers here. And then uh, the numbers are a way for me to support my evidence in this part of the story too. So as you write your evidence, make sure that you are including different kinds of evidence. And those are three things that you can uh, get started with doing. And the last part of your essay is your conclusion. Uh, your conclusion should do three things. Restate your main idea, review your main points, and leave readers with something to think about. Let's look at how I did that in the zoo article. You can see down here that uh, I've highlighted the part in gray where I'm restating my main points, uh, I'm reviewing what I've said to remind my reader, hey, look, this is what's going on. And the very last sentence is where I'm leaving some my reader something to think about. I'll put that in bright green. I don't like it. It's a little too dark, uh, a little too bright. 
Right. The next time you go to a zoo and stare at the eyes of those poor animals, ask yourself, is this okay? It's a little ominous, but I think it does leave the reader with something to think about. Um, and if I zoom out, you can see what the essay looks like. In total, it's not super long. It could be longer. I have definitely ways to improve it, which we'll do later on. But uh, it is a good format and a good shape of an essay. And again, let me zoom out of this document so you can see exactly what you should be doing when you are writing your essay. All right, your introduction should contain three different things. The middle paragraph should be your reasons. Please include as much evidence as possible. It really does show that you understand what you're reading. And finally, your conclusion should do three things as well. Okay.